Hello, welcome to Nate Studio Desk, and today we're going to go over Rhino versus SketchUp and hopefully encourage you to transition to use Rhino. And if you've already made that decision, uh, go over some helpful terminology um, between these two programs, which I think will help uh, make the learning process of, of learning Rhino uh, a lot easier. So Let's get over, let's get into some of the uh, main differences of the program and go over why I prefer Rhino so much more than SketchUp. And I have used both these tools quite extensively. I stopped using SketchUp, so I'm a little bit out of, out of the loop. Um, what I found with, with SketchUp was you end up having to download so many add-ins and third-party tools in order for it to do what you want it to do. And so you would get Bubble and, and all these other extensions. And I think that's fine, uh, but it's really annoying, especially when you switch to another computer and then you have to do the whole process over again and download an extension for every single function. Now, for some people that might be nice because you don't, you might not, you can start to customize SketchUp for how you need to use it and you only download the add-ins that you need. However, in Rhino, they're just already there and you don't need to worry about uh, researching which add-ins you need to do to do certain tasks. The biggest advantage to Rhino over SketchUp is, I think, is the line work. And as you notice in, in SketchUp, um, the line work is um, what I would call you have sticky geometry. And so once you've crossed over something, um, once you move something here, it's automatically tied to that object. Um, and what ends up happening in SketchUp is you have to make everything into groups. And so when you're working, you come to the point where you are just constantly pressing Control G and if you don't do that, your file will end up a mess and it's really frustrating. So now let's jump over to Rhino here. And this is where I think Rhino really just, it it blows SketchUp out of the park in terms of just line work. Uh, you can use um, Rhino just like you, you, you would use AutoCAD. A lot of people talk about how, oh, well, Rhino is good for crazy shapes and curves. Well, actually, it's just good with, with line work, with just pure, you know, doing a CAD drawing, doing floor plans. Um, and yeah, it can also do crazy shapes too, but uh, it should not be overlooked at for just doing basic massing uh, as well. And so you have a lot of options within the curves and what you can do with that and everything is uh, baked in here. So that's really the the main the main pros and cons i mean we could go into a lot of different topics as far as um you know rendering and all that kind of thing i, I think those start to um be pretty comparable because you can uh, render pretty much just as well in sketchup or rhino because eventually you're just bringing into photoshop and adding layers and making it nice now i think the the just the default rendering mode in Rhino tends to be nicer, but um, SketchUp also has a lot of those functionalities. You have a lot of um, you know you can do lots of different styles and, and get good results. You can export line work really well. Um, so I think you know those those really are the main kind of pros and cons in my mind. Um, and then with the other tools, it starts to become pretty comparable. There's one last thing that I think is really awesome in, in Rhino. And again, you can get the extension in, um, in, in, um, you can get the extension in SketchUp, but it's an additional extension and it doesn't really work too well. And essentially the loft function in Rhino, it, it works really well. And uh, so for instance, you can make a series of, let's turn this to shaded. Let's do some curves here. 
So for instance, if I did a series of curves, and then I click all those and I compress loft, I get a lofted, a lofted surface there. And so, you know, that would just be harder to do. And you can use Bubble and some other extensions with, with um, Rhino, but with, with SketchUp, but with, with Rhino, it's just, it's much more fluid and uh, really easily, whoops. Oh, you have to press, you have to okay it, I guess. Loft. You have all these different loft commands. And let's say you wanted to make a series of beams along this loft. Uh, I would just do contour and contour this line and then extrude those curves. We need to extrude them in the other direction. There we go. There we go. So just a really nice, the rendered is turning, oh, there we go. So really easily you can, you can work with surfaces. So those are the two main advantages um, is, is really just how the surfaces behave and operate and how easily it is to manipulate surfaces. And, um, and you can also do the same sort of push and pull things in Rhino too. You know, I can push and pull this stuff. Um, and if you always, you know, if you want to make this offset surface, you know, you can just extrude it up. And so, you know, it works pretty similarly, similarly as far as the capabilities to push and pull. Um, but the, the type of the fact that you're actually working with curves and these, the poly surface is just a really, um, it's just really easy to work with and it just makes it makes modeling so much better um and I, I just i don't think there's really even a comparison between the two tools honestly but um i'm also heavily biased so a quick thing i want to go over some of the terminology and so here in sketchup you you basically i think it's just it's just the surface i don't even know if it has a name um and you have curves obviously and you have groups and you have components and so in rhino groups they don't really work uh they don't work at like groups in sketchup and this is an important thing to know so you know if i make a group which you, you know in sketchup you should make everything into a group or it becomes this sticky object control g I guess maybe it's, I'm not sure what the edit, make group. Oh, I guess that's a component now. Okay, so this is a group and you can double click it and then you enter into group land and you can have multiple objects in there. Now when you go over to Rhino and you make a group out of an object, they don't, they don't treat groups in the same manner. So let's say I made this into a group. To my knowledge, there's no way to go into, so let's say I make, like let's say I have two objects and I make this into a group. There's no way to sort of double click edit, object you know there's no way to actually like double click and go into that environment as as groups go um, you can explode it um, but to my knowledge you can't edit it and if someone knows how to please let me know because I don't know how to and that's not really the point of groups groups is is not used in the same way in Rhino um, I use it more as a temporary function I'll have a bunch of objects, I'll group them, I'll ungroup them, and it's more of a transitory thing to just help move items around. So in order to have 
the equivalent of groups in Rhino is a block, which is similar to blocks. And I made a YouTube video just on blocks, so I won't go too much into detail, but it's, it's, it's a similar thing um, to groups, but it's actually more similar to uh, components in SketchUp. And so um, let's say I make this into a block, block, um, now when I copy paste that block, I can double click and then I go into my sort of SketchUp mode of block. And then when I edit this and I press OK, it's going to edit the other block here. So that is the equivalent of actually components in uh, SketchUp. So here I made a component. Um, and you all know that if you are a SketchUp user. So once you change that one element, you change everything. So that's the groups and the blocks. Um, another terminology to know is sort of the difference between poly surfaces and meshes and, and surfaces. And so here in SketchUp, it it doesn't really distinguish, you know, everything is sort of this similar type of geometry. When you get into Rhino, you have this terminology of what's called a poly surface. And that is basically just, um, it usually consists of an extruded element. It's a solid object. Um, whereas a surface is usually just a, a plane, like here I'll type in planar surface. That is just one plane or element. And so you're mainly in Rhino, you're mainly dealing with poly surfaces and surfaces, and they, they do behave differently. And so it's easier to um, manipulate a surface. Um, and once it's in a poly surface, it does become, um, you know, you have some limitations to what you can do. And then they also have meshes and meshes are really meant for if you're going to bring it to an additional program. That's at least how I use it. Other people might use it um, in a different way. If you want to export it into a different program, let's say you want to 3D print something, I usually turn something into a mesh uh, and that is just read in different file formats. Um, and it's, it's more of this like fractile thing. Um, you can't, um, if it's a mesh, like let's say a mesh, you can't extract surfaces off of that. So if I have a mesh here, you can see I won't be able to, um, like let's say, I wouldn't be able to, well, actually I can't, I can't extrude it, but you'll see that it does, uh, it looks different. It's not as, um, you know, sort of planar uh, and it's essentially like you could think of it almost as like a nested geometry. So I think those are are the um, the main terminologies. Poly surface, basically an object, works similar to surfaces. Uh, curves are, you know, they really they work like vectors in in AutoCAD uh, and an Illustrator, and you can work between AutoCAD and Illustrator pretty easily when it comes to line work between those three programs that works that works really well let's see if there's any other terminology um push and pull uh you have your push and pull in um in sketchup and in rhino it is extrude um that's the main thing um yeah, I'm sure there's tons of other terminology, but I think those are the most, the, the base, the basic ones, the most important ones, the, the terminology that's used most, most frequently. Cool. Well, I hope you uh, switch over to Rhino and please subscribe to my videos and my channel. And um, let me know if you have any questions and let me know why you think uh, SketchUp is better. Um, try to prove me wrong, um, but you know, after working in both these programs and really getting into SketchUp, uh, at first, it it just it kills you. It, your models just end up messy, and it, it's it's just 
just does the program doesn't work well even if you know it really well um, and Rhino just it has so much more capabilities when it comes to surfaces and manipulating geometry and in SketchUp you have to ha add a bunch of add-ons and when you switch computers then you lose all those add-ons and then you spend the whole day adding all your add-ons and so um, I wouldn't even learn SketchUp it's it's just a waste of time that's a little harsh um, it's always good to know more tools but um, yeah Rhino's just a really really great great tool so have a good day